Go. All Go. right. This is Mike from Boyer Bows. We are at, maybe you've heard of this place, the Home Depot. And what we're doing here today is this is the preemptive strike, if you will, the preview of what I'm going to be doing is another high-performance longbow for under $10. We're going to be using a new wood today that Home Depot just started uh, carrying maybe a year ago. And this time, I'm bringing Jason from Rasher Quivers along with the ride, the first non-internet student I have. And what are you going to build today? What kind of bow are you going to build today? I'm going to build a Mulgabet. Mulgabet. Are you going to back it with anything? No. It's going to be it's a self-bow self Mulgabet. I am going to be doing a Mulgabet as well. Same bow, but this time I'm going to add some little tricks and tra tra stuff to it. I'm going to be maybe recurving it a little bit. I'm going to add a riser this time, this, this time, guys. We're still going to try to keep the price. His is definitely going to be under 10 bucks, because all he needs is a board. Mine, I'll show you a little bit of other stuff. And uh, let's get into the Home Depot and get this thing started. You ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Hit that sign up there. Guys, this is red oak. This is what I made the last high performance longbow out of. Uh, we're going, it's great wood. Problem is red oak can get a little brittle. And uh, in, in stave form, it's great, great stuff. In board form, they kiln dry it, and so it can get a little bit brittle. So I'm starting to move away from red oak. They've got something new here. They've got maple. So let's see if we can find something. Alright guys, so first thing we're going to do is go over the, the grain of the wood that you should be looking for. Now, essentially speaking, grain identification is the same in all wood, okay? Whether it's this piece of red oak, whether it's a piece of maple, whether it's a piece of hickory, when it comes to a board, this is what you want to look for, okay? Now, from a distance, what I want you to see is that you want to see the grain running vertically up the wood without coming off the wood. That's real important. And you want it on the back and the belly. And you also want that on the side. Now let's bring one of these cameras in here and I'll show you what we got on this board. I'm just going to follow this. Now if you look here, this wood grain pretty much runs vertically the length of this entire board. Now let's look at it from the side. This, this one's got more grain pattern in it. I want to put my finger on the one closest to the edge here, okay? Running it up, we're just going to follow it up. Okay, it's kind of going in the middle. It's going up. Still there. Going all the way, and then there, it's coming off there. And you see how that's coming off? That's called a runoff. Okay, so even though it looks good here, what you have is if you have it on an angle, these two lines here are running up and they're coming into a point. If you flex that as the back, that could lift up on you, and that's what we want to avoid. So what you want is as much vertical line with as little runoff the sides as you can find. It's not easy to find this. Why? Because they're not cutting the wood at the lumber store to make bows. They're cutting it to make pat por uh, porches and deck wall and, and, uh, and other kinds of uh, you know construction things. They're not doing it to make bows, so they're not considering that. So you have to look through a lot of boards. And then as far as the ends go, don't worry about the ends so much. What you would like to see is technically a diagonal pattern across it, but for now, don't worry about it too much. Just find the, the, the priority, the number of priority would be vertical lines on the side, vertical lines on the back and belly, and then a decent crown on the top. But we won't worry about that right now. Let's just do the back, belly, and sides. And now, my lovely student, Jason Albert, is here and he's going to look through the red oak and he's going to try to find himself a piece of wood. So, how about you? I, I got wood. And the comedy begins. Okay. okay. Go I, get him, Jason. Look through those boards. You need a piece 
or I'm going to need a piece about two and a half inches wide, but because I have a table saw, I'm going to go ahead and get a little something a little You can bigger. find, because you have a table saw, you can find the best piece, the best grain you can in anything two and a half inches wide or larger in width. Now the dimensions on this bow that we're going to do, I recommend getting at least six feet worth of wood. You're going to cut that and we're going to make risers out of the remainder as well as uh, maybe some other little features. But when we're all said and done, we're going to have about a 64 inch bow from tip to tip. Let's see what Jason finds. I don't want this piece because I can tell already it's got the stuff coming right off the floor. Good. This one here is almost nice, but once again, it's still got the pieces coming right off the floor here. This one here is horrible because the peat that they just go right across. This. Yeah, I'm gonna make a good point for this though. Is that this is a terrible piece of wood, but this is what the lumber stores generally want because when the rings are facing you like this, it's really pretty. So they want this stuff. This is what they're going after. And for anyone who thinks they can do take this down to a single ring, single growth ring, um, feel free. Good luck. Uh, I won't stop you. So if you want to do that, you go right ahead. But this is something for now, self bow wise to avoid. That right there is a gorgeous piece of wood. It's unfortunate it will not work for a bow. Now, if you put a good backing on that, that would be might be fine. But uh, I'm giving Jason some hints here. But that's okay. He's 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 good. On my piece. Alright, look at the sides first. Remember the priority of the sides, then the back and belly. We'll worry about the crown later. Alright, this is gonna go with it. Alright, let's take a look. This is a this is a three and a half inch wide, but you got a table saw, so that's not important. Let's look at the grain. Let's look at the sides first. Now, come here, Jason. Look at the sides. Now, what you see here, follow this one right here. This one? This one goes off already, so it's already off. Now, watch this. It's coming up, and it goes up right here. Okay? This is, this portion of the board is no good for what you're doing. All right, but let's go down a little further and see if it gets better. Because you've got a pretty long piece of wood here. And it's not bad. Not bad. It actually has a couple little runoff spots, but all of them are on this side of the bow. Okay? Now, if all of the runoffs are on this side of the bow, this is your belly, this is your back. Okay? Okay. Because the belly is under compression. This will not hurt the wood if it's under compression. If it's under elastic, stress it could lift let's look at the front all right now you gotta look at both sides unfortunately this end looks better to me than this end they got a lot of lines on this board but as far as this board goes uh this wouldn't be my first choice unless i was putting a backing on there's a lot of runoffs on this board so in other words it's a good thing i brought mike with me otherwise i would have bought a bad piece of wood yeah, this isn't this wouldn't be my first choice so let's, uh, it's a good idea, but uh, let's see what else we can find. Here, let's, those are out, so let's move these out.
see about this one here. The first thing that jumps out at me are these ugly knots. In boards, you don't want to use them. Right, but okay. I'm a long piece so I can There's cut a it. piece from about here up. This one's, this knot's not so bad, and you might be able to cut around it anyway, but then you've got this weird stuff going on. If you start, this is the, your outermost line here. You follow it, it runs off about there. So if you can go from there up, it's a pretty short piece. I think you're too short at that point. I've been short my whole life. Well, <laughs> your wood is too short. Have you heard that before? <laughs> no. Okay, just check it. Yeah, I'm going to say let's keep looking. This is what I do whenever I come to the lumber store to look for a piece of wood. And I go through every one and nine times out of ten it's the very last board in the back, tucked away. Just Murphy's Law on that. All right, stay on Jason for a second. I want to just check something over here. So you over there. One second. I think I found a nice piece. Did you? Yep. All right, let's take it. No. I'm going to have to, again, I'm going to cut it so this piece here is irrelevant. All right, so how wide do you want your bow to be? I recommend them mulgabets to be at least two inches wide. Do we have two inches here? Yes. Okay. Then, looking down, look down the wood here. Tell me what you see. Follow, say, well, you're going to not use this, right? Right. So this entire section is running off right there. Yep. It's hard to see. you got to really look down the board. But let's just jump ahead real quick. This is a, you have a table saw. Yes. This right here is something I've been eyeballing while you've been talking about it. Because this one is from behind it, but I kind of like it. But right off the bat, you have some pretty fat rings here. Okay? You can see the grain underneath the rings. Now you only need two inches, and you need about, did I say six feet? Six yeah. feet. So you're going to go from about here. I'm seeing a bow right here. These don't run off at all. How about the side? This side? This side. Oh, let's see about the side. Yeah, I gotta, gotta check the side. Now let's look at the side. They do come off a little bit, but let's do, let's see, they'll, they'll come off here. Yeah, they have, they're running off. They're not bad, though. The thing is, you can get a bow. You might be able to get one bow self bow out of this and then two more back bows out of this piece of wood. This, is, this might be a good piece of wood. But you see that one sticking up over the others right there, those straight lines? On the left and the right, we'll be in the middle. Six We got some runoff on that side. Oh, we got it. All right, check this out, guys. All right, we're gonna follow this this line right here. Boy, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. You got to run off there, but I'm watching it from this line right here. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. It's just keeping it going. This on the side is looking pretty good to me. There's a little bit of something, something right here, but we can make this the belly without any issue. And look at the face of this. You telling me we can't find a good bow in there? I think we got three good bows in here, to be honest with you. Let's flip it over. Okay, we do have a little bit of a knot to work around, but I'm thinking one bow, two bows, get rid of that, and then a flat bow with that piece right there. So you've got three bows in this piece of wood. Nice. So I would go with this. If you have access to a table saw, uh, this, is, this is the one I would go with. 
to me, that's that's a, one of the best pieces of wood I've seen in Home Depot for Red Oak. So, this is my board. There may be many others like it, but this one is mine. Oh, we, oh, oh, the mighty hunter returns from the hunt. Should we tell him the board is twice his uh, size or do we let that go?